Greetings fellow Gorehounds and welcome back to a Blood Splattered Vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Dracula. And today we're going to be talking about Chucky the series. Uh, but first we're going to be talking about the first two episodes of Chucky because the whole show isn't out yet. And so there's only two episodes to talk about so far. Yeah, we just wanted to give you our thoughts so far on the show as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to say right off the bat, just like everything Child's Play and Chucky, this is yet another great entry in the franchise um, that takes it in a different direction. Well, also yeah. kind of bringing it back back to its roots at the it, same it is, time. It is. It's it's totally in continuity with the uh, Mancini movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in continuity with, with all the movies, with the exception of the remake, which is the only outlier in terms of uh, the continuity. Yeah. Um, but even the remake is a pretty good movie too. So all of these movies are pretty good. Like the worst one is like Child's Play 3. And even that's a fun movie. If you watch it, it's under certain circumstances. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But like, here's the thing. It's what you love. It's the Chuck. Yeah, yeah. It's the and you, fucking Chuck, and that is The Chuck that great. you don't fuck with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it is great watching Brad Dourif, like listening to Brad Dourif just go off again and yeah. do Chucky, like full bore. Like, like okay, okay. I, I, I've been on record as not being the biggest fan of Curse of Chucky, though I've actually come, I've come around to it a lot more in, uh, as time is, thanks, honking horns outside. Yeah, Chucky's a great show. We yeah, agree. yeah, I agree. Um, I have come around to it over time and uh, learned to appreciate it. But my problem with that movie initially was that Chucky wasn't the cackling, you know, snarky maniac that he had been up until that point in the franchise. You know, like it harkened, that movie harkened back more to like the tone of the first movie where he didn't talk nearly as much as he does in the later movies. Yeah. Um, uh, this show 100% has the Chucky that I love. Just yeah. full bore, being an asshole. Hey, hey, <laughs> I'm your friend of the end. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, it also helps that this movie goes back to like where the franchise kind of began by having Chucky involved with a kid. Now, in yeah. this, they, it, it's, yeah. a, it's an older kid than it was before. Like, he's not like six. He's more yeah, like, he's like 13, 14. Yeah, yeah. He's in middle school. So uh, he's a teenager, but not quite in the upper age teenagers. Yeah, he's at um, the point where it's a little weird that he has a doll, but not like so yeah. weird that you think something's irreparably wrong with him. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know? Especially as the show goes on and like like he has like the ventriloquist act with the doll and yeah. it's actually Chucky talking. Yeah. Like that's oh, that's that, not, was, that was beautiful. That's not even like a like a spoiler. We'll, we'll talk about spoilers soon. But that, that that's just a fun detail that if if you like movies like Magic or um, any of those weird like puppet doll movies like Night of the Living Dummy or the uh, the Goosebumps uh, movie they made. Um, you, you'll, you'll enjoy what they do with Chucky in this one because they kind of bring a little bit of those movies in a bit. Yeah. Um, which is pretty awesome. Um, uh, the other thing I really like about this movie, or the show actually, um, is that Don Mancini, the creator of Chucky, uh, the original writer of Child's Play and the writer of every Child's Play since and, in, and director of a couple of them, uh, he himself is a gay man, and over the course of the series, he's been systematically adding more and more queerness to the franchise, whether it be uh, uh, Glenn and Glenda in yeah. uh, Seed of Chucky. Who is fucking mentioned in the second episode, by the way. Yep, yep. Even John Waters being included in that movie is yeah. also a great example of yeah. it, because Seed of Chucky was a huge, like, like that was obviously a tribute to John Waters' movies, and so you can yeah. feel it in that. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, that's that's definitely got some like serial mom. And yeah, shit even there. Bride of Chucky referencing uh, Bride of Frankenstein is also has some queer roots there because yeah. the the director of uh, Bride of Frankenstein also notoriously uh, was a gay man. So yeah, James Will. There you go, um, and. Uh, and that continued as the franchise went on. They even included um, some more queer characters in the following sequels. Uh, and then they had like the weird body swapping thing that was happening in happening the last in one. Happening in Chucky? Yeah. 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 Where it was like, well, that was when, like, that that's where it got weird because you're like, wait, that's the, the, so basically you have Brad Dourif's daughter playing Chucky, playing her. Yeah. yeah. 
and, 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 and I apologize to, for anyone if we've just spoiled aspects of Cult of Chucky. That movie's been out for a while now, and now that we're in the latest entry, I feel it's okay to kind of spoil the old entry. Yeah. It's also, boring. it's 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 imp you don't have to see it to understand what's happening in this show, but it helps. Oh yeah, it fucking helps. Like like this show hasn't gone full into the events of what happened at the end of the last movie, but you can tell they're going to eventually. Yeah. Um. Uh, eventually, this show is going to tie into that, and they already have little hints of that. Like like that. Like in the first episode, the kid is called by um uh uh God damn it what? Andy Andy yeah, yeah. Andy yeah. calls the kid at one point in the in the thing, and it's a little small little scene that's just a hint, and and it's it's very clear that the call was happening while the other movie was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, that <laughs> is happening. That first episode happens while Cult of Chucky is going on. <laughs> exactly. So you're like, okay, all right. So these are going to tie in. These are going to tie in big time as the show goes on. So I'm totally down for that. Um, but this show actually decides to go a little further than he's gone before with the queerness by actually having the main character himself uh, be gay. Yeah. Um, so you have a gay kid, a gay coming of age story. Um, involving Chucky, which is essentially what the yeah, show or is. Or how, did, how did they pitch it? It's a gay coming of rage story. Yes, that's a good way to put it. That's a good way to yeah, put it. Don Mancini has is, is, is steadily turned Chucky not into a horror icon, but also a, a strangely queer friendly one as yeah, well. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I kind of I like that. There, there's even like a line in the second episode, which is not really a spoiler because they put it in the promotional material from what I was seeing. Yeah. Also, the clip has been going around Twitter nonstop, so yeah. it's really hard. <laughs> hard to avoid it uh, uh where chucky uh uh is talking to the kid and and the kid and and the, and and chucky's like i have a queer kid uh uh gender you're fluid, fluid. <laughs> and you're okay with this i'm not a, I'm monster. Not a monster you know <laughs> which is probably my favorite line because he show just for. fucking killed somebody yeah yeah you've just watched him kill multiple people as the show has gone on because we're only two episodes in, and he's already racked up a body count. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and, and he's like, I'm not a monster. So, serial killer, uh, but not homophobic. Homophobic. Which is actually growth and an improvement, because you could tell in Scene of Chucky, he did have a problem. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know how to handle. So, he Chucky has grown deal. since then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, something I don't know yet, because uh, if you watch Cult of Chucky, in Cult of Chucky, they... The, the, the franchise went buck wild because um, Chucky learned how to separate himself into different bodies. So there's multiple different versions of Chucky running around. Yeah. And so I'm really curious as to how this incarnation of Chucky, which is obviously not one of the ones from the previous movie. From the movie, cult, because he's here, not yeah. there. Yeah. What's going to happen when this Chucky meets the other Chucky's? Yeah. Because one thing I've noticed about this show so far is that while Chucky's still a murderous, like, sociopath and is obviously trying to get the kid to murder as well uh, for reasons that are not yet explained yet, but we'll find out. Yeah. Um, is I get the impression that this Chucky actually kind of likes this kid. <laughs> yeah, on some it, sort of weird, even though he's using it. Yeah, even though he's using it in a way that he didn't like Andy. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, like I don't know. Like, like he takes every time someone does something shitty to him personally. Yeah, yeah, it's and, really interesting. And that's something he never did with Andy. Like, he never cared if someone was shitty to Andy. As he, long as he could get away with what he exactly. was doing. Exactly. Yeah. He would kill people who did do shitty things with Andy, but not because they did shitty things to Andy. Yeah. Whereas in this case, Chucky is doing, like, killing some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, or it's at least threatening revenge, to. revenge. Yeah. You know? And you're like, what's his game? Yeah. What's yeah. his game? What's he doing? Is, is, so he... is he trying to find another body to jump into? Like, I mean, I don't think he needs to do that anymore unless he's not aware of what the cult of Chucky discovered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you so know? You're, 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 you, you know that he wants to kill people, but... You know that there's something else that he's after, but yeah. they have not revealed that yet. So, like, yeah, well, the show has a lot that happens in the first two episodes, and it is a lot of fun. They also leave a lot of cool questions for you to, like, ponder uh, in between episodes, waiting for, like, okay, well, how is this going to tie in? Well, one of the one of the things that the show's obviously going to do, because they tease it at the end of the first episode and the, oh, yeah. the second, is that we're going to go into the history of Charles Lee Ray. Yeah, yeah, like, we've gone a little bit into his history, but not his childhood before. Yeah. Whereas this show is having random flashbacks that are flashing back to when he was a little kid and his relationship to his mother. And, yeah, and you're and, like, whoa. And I'm wondering how psycho okay. is this going to go, you know? Yeah. 
you know? But you get the impression from some of these flashbacks that Charles Lee Ray was always fucked up. Oh yeah. Like, 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 there's like a flashback where he's like fucking with, um, uh, App, candied apples. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> deliberately eats an apple that he knows has a razor blade. Yeah, yeah. And, you know? and, you're, and you're just you're like, like, oh, okay. <laughs> and that leads me to another thing. This, this, uh, this, um, uh, this is a sci-fi series on the Sci-Fi Channel. But just because it's on the Sci-Fi Channel does not mean it is toned down. Oh, it is not. Uh, there's some gruesome fucking deaths that have happened so far on this show. Um, uh, and uh, your, your, your inner gorehound is going to be pleased. And you can tell that they're just getting started. And oh, yeah. the show is going to ramp up and the body count's just going to pile yeah, up. Yeah, it's just going to keep on going. Like, there's no way it doesn't. And But one of the things I thought was really fucking... I realized I hadn't seen in a mm -hmm. long time. Okay, so, so so Chucky's like... He's a villain, right? But, yeah. like... He, He's the villain you expect, so you gotta have like a secondary villain, particularly if it's gonna be a bullying story. Yeah, right? yeah. I haven't seen a story, uh, a movie, where a bully is just an irredeemable piece of shit. To the extent. In a long ass oh time. Oh my god, the extent they go to with, with her in this. Yes. Is insane. Yeah, she is such a fucking piece of shit. Oh my god. You know, yeah. you're, you're sitting there going like. I can't wait for you to fucking die. Like, imagine if your bully is like a little Dolores Umbridge. It's really, yeah. it's, yeah, it's that's exactly what it it's is. It's really aggravating. Yeah. Um, um, and a it's little a, woke Dolores Umbridge. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and it, it's, and she, it, she pisses off Chucky all the time too. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, which is a fucking, who, the only person who isn't pissed off by her are her lackeys. Yeah. And like her boyfriend, who's obviously, despite the fact that the boyfriend does not get along with the main character, you do get the feeling that part of that is because he's had his soul crush. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, this show also has, um, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Devin Sawa, um, who some people may remember from various 90s and early 2000s movies and early 2000s horror movies. Oh yes. Um, as uh, the main characters, father and hit the main character's uncle because they're twins um yeah the characters are twins played by the same actor. and you get to see him both simultaneously play a complete and utter piece of shit and a well-meaning but still not quite there uh guy who's trying to do good but is way too privileged to understand how to do good yeah um yeah. And he plays both characters really, really well, and it was really cool to kind of see him in this as as a fan of him in the uh, in the early two thousands horror scene, uh, back when he was doing those movies regularly. Um, Man, uh, this scene is this show is very much about bullying, by the way, uh, not just um, bullying uh, at school, but also bullying at home. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so I just want I just want to prepare you for that. While this show is fun and it is humorous, it does get pretty dark yeah. at times. Yeah, you will you will you will watch like fucking parents cut down their children. Oh God, yeah, yeah, and it does not pull punches on that. Like you can really tell that that Don Mancini had something to say about homophobic parents. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and 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 he makes his statement with yeah. this show. Oh, also one of the things that's really cute is that. Um, uh, Chucky has like a little seven-year-old girl that gets a crush on him. Oh man, <laughs> that was adorable. That was fucking adorable. She like sees him and starts drawing him everywhere. It's so yeah. cute. <laughs> I also love that interaction of like, mommy says you shouldn't swear, Chucky. Mommy says a lot of things that are full of shit, kid. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Oh, you're a natural kid. You'll you you'll you'll be killing people in no, no time. time. Uh, uh, mommy says you shouldn't kill people in real life. Mommy's really working her way up my list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, oh, Chucky no, the one line, Chucky dialogue is great. Like the Chucky one-liners are back. They brought it back in Cult of Chucky as well, but they go even full. Oh, well, these this. are like these are the, 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 in Cult of Chucky. It was like, oh hey, they brought one-liners back. Now these, the other one-liners you fucking really remember. Like what this feels like is this feels like the Chucky from Child's Play two. If he actually cared about Andy a little bit, yeah, um, yeah. like that's what this still feels gonna like. kill him. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> you know, like that's what it kind of feels like. Um, and and obviously Chucky has grown a little bit since his uh, previous adventures based on some of the things he says in this. Yeah. Now, that being said, it's still clear that he is still Chucky and he has ulterior motives. Oh yeah, he's still looking <laughs> obviously to frame this kid for all the murders yeah, for some yeah, reason. Yeah, like th what his end game is, no fucking clue. But uh, I'm excited to find out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we're also pretty... Tiffany has not shown up yet, but we're pretty sure she's gonna. I know, I know that Jennifer Tilly was promoting the show hardcore when they were filming it, so I know she's. So in the she's show. gotta be in it. She's yeah. gonna be in it at some point. Um, she was at the red carpet premiere and all that stuff. Like she's oh, gonna man. be in this. She's, yeah, yeah. You know, that's just gonna happen. Man, this is this. <sighs> I can't. This was the thing that I was afraid was going to suffer because of the remake, mm -hmm. and. I'm glad to see that, at least artistically, as a show, that is not the case. Yeah, yeah. Like, I totally get why everyone involved with the uh, the original Child's Play series were frustrated with them greenlighting a remake while they were still making original yeah. series movies. Yeah. Like, that, that was like... It's like, oh, like you can't make, you can't let our movies go to theaters, but you're going to remake it and put it in put theaters. Put it in theaters. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, so I totally understand their frustration. Um, but that being said... This show is so good. I'm kind of glad it got made. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'm not yeah. sure the show would have been made had the remake not happened. Yeah, talk about, talk about like, you know, fucking getting lemons and making lemonade. Yeah, man, and also, know? I ended up really liking the remake, so I'm kind of glad they both exist, exist, you know? Like, yeah. Um, but I totally get, if you're Don Mancini, why you'd be pissed about it, because, hey, we're still making these movies. You could put our latest one in theaters. But instead, but instead, you're remaking it. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Great. And apparently, uh, Gomez in the kitchen is meowing. I don't know if you could hear it on the audio track right now because sometimes when he's in the, in the kitchen, it's a little too faint uh, um, over the music. But if you can't hear him, he he is also upset uh, yeah. how they screwed over Damien. Yeah. Damien either either that or there's like a possessed puppet in the house. Oh, there might be. There might be. There might be. That it's no. not the first time. No. No. Won't be the last. Won't be the first. Probably won't be the last. Correct. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, I don't know what else there is to really say about it. I There's just, not really a lot of spoilers because we're not really that far into the story. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to the spoilers and talk a little bit more about the the plot of the individual episodes in more depth in a minute. But like, I just kind of want to take a moment to say, I can't believe we live in an age where we got an Evil Dead TV show. Uh, yeah, and yeah. it was really good. We're now having a Chucky TV show, and it's really good. There are other horror movies that are being made into TV shows. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Scream, uh, but they're doing an I Know What You Did Last Summer one now, and it's probably not gonna be my thing, but some people are liking it. Yeah. So like, I can't believe we live in an age where people are making quality TV shows on the old horror, old franchise. horror franchises. Yeah. Franchises yeah. that, at a period of time, people said were dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, well, like, well, we knew better. We knew Evil Dead wasn't dead, dead. Yeah, it was just no one was. They just weren't They're able to make the a movies. new movie right now. Yeah, <laughs> and they said that they were going to be done after after, after Ash. Ash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> You're never done. Never too late to fall in love again. You yeah. know, but Chucky was probably the perfect character to get a show out of all the '80s slasher icons, um, because, like, he works as both an antagonist and an anti-hero, depending upon how you use him. Yeah, like yeah. if you had- It would be harder to do that with Freddy. Yeah, you couldn't do that with Freddy. Um, uh, you could probably make a show out of Nightmare on Elm Street pretty easily, just because there's a lot more crazy shit you could do with it. Yeah. I don't know how well a Friday the 13th series would go that was about Jason. Because yeah, Because they've yeah. made multiple slasher shows that are kind of like that, and while some of them are good and some of them are okay, they never quite feel like they needed to be TV shows most of the time. Yeah, yeah that's, for me. that's why I was like, I thought that it, it, it really should honestly be like Jason in fill in the fucking blank. Oh, like yeah. every three episodes we change it up. Yeah. Like it's it's Jason during the Revolutionary War, it's Jason during the Civil War, it's Jason in the French French Revolution. And you're just like, why is he fucking in all of these fucking goddamn places? Yeah. You know, and, and I'm like, look, 
because eventually, if we play our cards right, we'll get Jason versus Alien. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> but Chucky's kind of like the perfect middle ground to make a TV show out of because he's got the personality of like a Freddy Krueger. So he's very fun to watch. Yes. And very very yeah. fun to interact with and taunt and uh, talk to the to his victims. Yeah. And because it's a not uh, for the actor who's most known for playing him, a Brad Dourif, yeah. it's not a physical role. It's a voice yeah, role. Yeah, absolutely. So he's able to just like do it. And his him being a doll, and in this case, going after a kid, like that, that that has so much more potential that you could expand upon, oh, right? Yeah. You know, like the many ways he could fuck with this kid's life. Yeah, well, like know? we've also seen, we've, we've also seen Chucky do something here that I don't think we've actually seen him do before, mm -hmm. which is impersonate a child. Yeah, that was really interesting. Yeah. I really like that bit, you know? Yeah, yeah, because it's because at one point it's Halloween, and so he just puts a mask on and- He goes trick or treating. Yeah. He goes trick or treating. I can't believe it. Chucky going trick or treating. What the fuck? I love it. I love it. Um. So yeah, the Child's Play series, AKA Chucky the series, um, is definitely worth a watch. I know some regions have not gotten it yet. So like if you're in the UK, I don't know if you can actually watch it yet, but when it comes to your areas, definitely check it out. And if you're in America right now, they're putting some of the episodes on YouTube and some various other places. And originally I was like, well, I'm gonna have to wait till they're all done. Right. Uh, but then they started actually uploading them to places. And I'm like, okay, all right, yeah, I'll yeah, watch yeah. it. Yeah, they, they um, yeah, we watched it on YouTube actually. Yeah, yeah. because they had the first two episodes on YouTube. So we're like, let's watch it there. Yep. Um, uh, so uh, watch it on whichever platform you can find that, that has it. I'm pretty sure YouTube is probably your easiest bet because it's YouTube. It's YouTube, yeah. you know? Um, uh, uh, and uh, we're gonna try, we're probably gonna do them in two episode spurts if we decide to do more vlogs on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, an episode of time just feels a little tedious. I feel like we'll have more to talk about if we do well, two Yeah, because they're only like an, uh, 45 minutes an hour. Exactly. You know? So I think we'll probably do two episode spurts. At that point, it's like talking about a movie, you know? Yeah. Um, and uh, and we'll try to do more vlogs on the, on them as they go on. I was originally gonna wait until uh, the show was over and vlog it then, uh, but it was so good. And Jack was like, "No, we gotta talk, no, about, we gotta this. talk about this." So I'm like, show. "All right, let's ta let's talk about Chucky." Especially since some of my best uh, videos that have done really well on here have been about Chucky stuff. Like my unboxing video of the the <laughs> Child's Play box set they put out a few years back. Oh yeah, that's got yeah. like a weird amount of views. Oh. So. <laughs> Obviously, talking about Chucky is a win-win for the algorithm. <laughs> so, let's do this. Um, and uh, with that being said, uh, is there any dead animals in this? I don't think yes. so. Yes, yeah, there oh. are dead animals in oh. this. Oh, well, yeah, the cat dies. Oh, you're right. There's yeah. a cat that gets killed. There's a dead cat. So far, it's been off screen, but he get a bit of the aftermath, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't watch it happen, but it happens. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, there's the dead animal. There's your warning for the dead animal, a dead kitty cat. And uh, with that said, let's move on to the spoilers. Dude. Bitch publicly humiliated the guy for the way his dad was killed. Oh my God. What the fuck? That was the moment where above all else, I was already kind of teetering on the edge of like, just let Chucky kill her. Yeah. But like she does that. And I'm sitting there going like, not, 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 not Chucky can have her. You yeah, know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm like, no, that is wrestling level heel shit. Oh my God. I, I will say this. I did have one criticism of that. They had, a, they had her in the costume doing that in that one shot. And then the next time we see her, she's in a completely different, different outfit. outfit. Yeah. And I was just like, was there like a reshoot that happened here? Or some sort of like insert that happened? Yeah. That felt a little clunky, but it's the only time I had any problem like that in the show. So, yeah. you know, but like, yeah, she does that. And you're just like, holy shit, this bitch, Jesus. Yeah. Oh my God, she's got to go. She got to go. She got to go. Like, like, yeah, she's got. She, she bartered away her humanity a long time. You know, and I and and and, and sure, the dad who uh, Chucky electrocutes after he beats the shit out of his son, or at least attempts to beat the shit out of his son, um, uh, for being gay, by the way, for being gay. That's yeah. why he does it. Uh, Chucky ends up electrocuting him and making it look like an accident, which I was like, oh, that's actually considerate of Chucky. I thought he was going to try to like frame the kid for the murder. And, yeah, yeah. And instead, he makes it look like the dad basically electrocuted himself on his own vomit. So, like, yeah. 
Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's considerate of Chucky. And that's what's making me think that maybe Chucky cares about the kid a little, a little bit. Yeah, like because, something's going on. Because the reason why he killed the dad was not like just because he felt like killing someone. It's because the dad was a homophobic, shitty, shitty dad. Yeah. Like he actually was punishing the dad for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like, it, it, I'm wondering if it's one of those things where he's sort of like, all right, <clears throat> Glenn, Glenn ain't going to be like me well that clearly oh yeah clearly. yeah clearly <laughs> clearly but maybe maybe this kid maybe this kid maybe, maybe I this can, kid can i wouldn't be footsteps. surprised i wouldn't be surprised who knows um we still do not quite know what his end game is we do know by the end of the most recent episode that he is trying to get the kid to kill his bully her himself himself yeah um to what end he's trying to do this with i, I don't know i do not know what the end game with that is um obviously if the kid becomes a serial killer then it's not going to be easy for him to just hide in that kid's body like his old plan used to be. Right. Um, and I don't even know if he needs to hide in a body anymore. So, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't know. But like, yeah, the guy, the dad was a homophobic jackass and he was murdered rightfully by Chucky for being a homophobic jackass and an abusive parent and a drunk. Um, yeah, uh, the devil's trifecta. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, even though that's true... What she does, dressing oh, up yeah. like the dad being electrocuted and mocking it at the Halloween party in front of everyone, and some people actually getting the joke and still laughing, that is that is so far beyond good. Like that is oh, like yeah. you yeah. you have you have reached into the ether of evil, and I'm like, you Chucky's the serial killer, but you're the monster. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. What I actually thought was really funny is that at the end of that episode, end of the episode, <laughs> because they've done, they, they, there's like a, like a, there's a, uh, uh, it's only on screen for like 10 seconds, but there's like a little, like, bullying PSA, which felt really oh. fucking funny because I'm like, you know, if you've been experiencing bullying, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just sitting there going like, I, I understand why this is there. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. 100%. But my brain goes, if you have a problem with bullying, have Chucky kill somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the thing is, is I know that more TV shows that are actually on TV, not on streaming, yeah. but on TV, I think there's like a regulation that requires them to put stuff like that because um, uh, more TV shows have been doing that. Like, oh, like yeah. Like there was, um, um, God damn it, what was it fucking called? Cruel Summer. Cruel there Summer. It was this yeah. show that I watched for a little while, and that show before every episode would have like a little warning and a PSA. And at the end of the episode, there'd be a PSA uh, about grooming um, because the show largely dealt with a teacher that was grooming a, a student. Um, and I, 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 I'm wondering if that's just like like a new regulation thing because it more and more be. shows it have been doing be. it. Yeah, because this one went by awfully quick. Yeah. You know, it was like, it was not like, we really want you to absorb all this information. So like, okay, and now we're done. Yeah, you know, like, either that or the fil or the or the or the showmakers just genuinely wanted to raise their awareness. You know, like, it's, it's a t yeah, either, it's entirely possible. Awesome. I have no idea what's going on there. Um, but but uh, uh, it is weird watching a Chucky thing and then getting a fucking awareness for bullying at the end. Yeah, that yeah, felt, it's a little surreal. <laughs> it was surreal as hell. I mean, kudos to them, but weird. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, so so far on the show, Chucky's killed two people, or is it more? Uh, he's killed the cat. He's killed a cat. He's killed the dad. He's killed a the, housekeeper. The housekeeper, yeah. Um, he tried to kill the bully, and then he was stopped. And then he, yeah, then that, <clears throat> that failed. Uh, so, so far, we got two kills, at least one per episode. Yeah, two kills, one injury. One injury, yeah. You know, one horrific and injury. And a dead cat. And a dead cat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so far, so good. Um, a lot of these sl slasher shows will often do like a kill an episode, and then by the end, you have like five kills an episode, yeah. depending upon uh, how many people are left when you get to the end. So, I'm sure they're going to be doing something similar here. Yes. Um, I really, oh, oh man, I really liked this coming of age story from the perspective of a, of a young gay kid. You don't realize how often you've not seen that. Correct. Until you're actually watching it and going like, oh, hey, yeah, like this actually, you don't see this very often. Well, no, know? not not front, not front and center stage. Like I re when I realized it was a thing I don't see very often, especially on TV of all things. Yeah. Um, is is when uh, he was uh, getting onto the bus and he sees the guy he likes. 
Yeah. And it's kind of filmed the way, like, when you were watching a normal teen yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, when you watch, like, a John Hughes movie. Yeah, yeah. And, shit, and a guy you know? sees the girl he really likes, and you get that same kind of framing and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, that's. That's really fucking adorable. Like, you don't get to see that very often. Especially since even a lot of shows that have a lot of queer characters right now, they're yeah, usually- they won't do that. They're usually a lot older teens and they don't necessarily do the more coming of age aspect of it because they're already well into their queerness, right? Yeah. This yeah. is a character who is kind of discovering it for themselves as they go. They know they're queer, but they haven't like had any experience yet. Yeah, so they're like, yeah. You know. there, well, there's a weird, there's, the show has a very odd, like kind of like, <laughs> Wonder Years Boy Meets World mm -hmm. quality, but with Chucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to put it. And so it can be weird, weirdly touching at times. Like every time he's talking to the guy he likes, you, you, you just go like, aw. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's cute. And uh, uh, much uh, as, as is the trend these days, uh, the, the guy he likes is a character who has a true crime podcast. Um, I actually found out why so many things right now have characters that, that run true crime pod podcasts. Is that because that's where a lot of the writers came from? No. Um, uh, if you actually look on Spotify and iTunes and some of the platforms that have podcasts, yeah. the top rated podcasts the last few years have largely been true crime podcasts. Oh. So they like they just exploded in popularity recently. Oh, and so that's okay. why a lot of TV shows have been having like true crime podcasts. Like there's a whole show right now that I really fucking love that just finished up that I highly recommend called Only Murders in the Building. Oh yeah, the new and uh, the, Steve Martin. Yeah, yeah, Steve Martin and Martin Short back to get back together again two of the three amigos yeah um and and they and the whole premise of the show is that they uh have a true crime podcast and a murder happens in their building and they try to solve it um uh but they're but they're two like goofball has-beens yeah two, two goofball <laughs> like showbiz has-beens you know and... who, are, who are trying to simultaneously run a podcast while also solve a murder that is hitting a little too close to home because it happened right next door yeah um and the reason why that entire show is about like true crime podcasters is because they're really popular right now. They're in, you know. Yeah. Uh, I guess with the, I guess it probably exploded with the popular like during the pandemic. Um, a lot of people were stuck at home, and true co crime documentaries became really popular. Yeah. Well, like the I first think that's major of that. breakout like podcast was also a true true crime one, but I can't remember what the title of it was. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like and like breakout like if you look at like the history of podcasts and true crime podcasts, you'll see it referenced constantly. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, in the wake of blah blah, blah which because I don't <clears throat> listen to them, I don't yeah know the name of it. You know, but I did. I did know that that was definitely a thing, but I didn't realize it was such a thing yeah. that you could just stick it in another medium and people would just know it existed. And so they kind of do like a pump up the volume kind of thing, um, where uh, you have the kid who does the podcast, yeah, and you have the uh, other kid that's really into the kid that does the podcast and listens to the podcast all the time. Yeah, but it's too shy to actually talk to him about it because they're really young; they're like thirteen. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it's really cute. I like. It. Uh, I really oh no, it, it's adorable, and you're right. It's it's a thing you realize. Wait, we don't, we actually don't see this not very, very often. often. No, we're seeing it more and more now. But like, because of shows like this, yeah, you know, yeah. Well, it's it's also one of those things where we've seen the theme of homophobic bullying. Yeah, that we've seen, but we've not really gone into it deep like uh, the Chucky Show did. It like, has already done. Actually following a queer character going to school every day and being bullied over it. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. like, like dealing yeah, it's, with it's, that. It's not a very special episode. It's the no. whole fucking show. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, and, and, and he's not always just being bullied for that. Sometimes he's bullied for other reasons. Oh, like, he, oh, he likes dolls. Well, the reason why he likes dolls is because he creates these little art sculptures and he wants to be a, a sculpture artist. Yeah. Um, but his dad doesn't approve of that. And because it's queer. Because it's queer, yeah. Um, so that's the why, reason why he collects vintage dolls is to create these, well, retro dolls. Retro dolls. He's into retro, not vintage, which is a funny little, yeah. like, one line that keeps coming back. <laughs> Uh, it's because he uses them to, to, to uh, he takes them apart and creates something new out of them. These big, weird, creepy, almost Clive Barkerian uh, sculptures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the funny thing, you look at you look at his stuff and you're just sort of like, you got a hell of a fucking career yeah. in special effects, kid. Oh yeah. yeah. It's good shit. <laughs> Wait, which is why when the dad fucking gets drunk and starts taking a baseball bat to them. Oh my oh God. Oh my God, my heart broke. Yeah. I was just like, you're, just like, you're pranking his sculptures? Yeah. 
Jesus, fuck you. you! You just fucking refused to pay for him to go to the fucking camp so that he can get like some some more experience doing this shit. But and then you took it a step further and broke all his shit and told him he can't collect dolls anymore. What the fuck? Yeah. You know, again, another case where you're just like, you know, no, Chucky no, can have this bitch. Yeah, just kill you him. Know? Just kill him. You know, just especially him. like the next time they, they have an argument, and he tells him he'll fucking kill him. Oh, and, and, and then and then the kid responds with like, you should have died in the car crash, not mom. And the dad gets so offended. I'm like, you don't get to be offended. You just said you would kill your fucking kid. kid. Yeah. You do not get to be offended at him you saying that no you should have died. There is no high ground for you, sir. No, yeah. you don't get that. Nah, 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 chief. You don't get that fucking privilege. You already were the one who whipped out the I'm gonna kill you fucking button. So him saying that he wished you died, that's a minor offense that's compared to what you said. That's self-defense at that point. <laughs> you, know? you know? Fuck you, dude. Um, and oh, so man. it's actually- Actor did a great job. Oh God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh God, yeah. And like, like, like- Everyone who's doing their best to give you their worst in this show is doing great. <clears throat> and what makes it even better is that like, you see him playing two different roles on the show. Yeah. So you get to see him play a completely different character who's related to that character, but is a very different person yeah, with yeah, very different, different problems. Different. Yeah, You know? Yeah, they're both, well, they're fucking, they're putting unrealistic expectations on their sons yeah. in different ways. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, but you get the impression that of the two dads, he might actually be able to learn from it. Well, he, like, the well, first he, dad, like he actually cares about his kid. Yeah. Like, he would rather his kid was alive and failed his expectations. You have like the abusive parent and then like the extreme helicopter, I'm gonna regulate yes. the whole day parent. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they're both problematic in their own ways, but one of them might actually be able to learn because he actually cares about the kid. Yeah, you know? yeah, he could change. The other guy just needs to die. <clears throat> yeah, which he does, and it's very satisfying. Like, <laughs> yeah. he gets fucking electrocuted, and it's face is all fucked up. I loved it. Oh, man. And of course, like, in the background, when the kid's, like, seeing it, he's like, ah, and then there's Chucky going, ah! <laughs> That fucking like 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 uh when the flashing lights was happening and Chucky was just moving forward like a weeping angel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that sequence. The you could th tell it was Weeping Angel inspired too. Yeah, it was shot oh, yeah. the same way. Yeah, well I also, I also like the fact that this show very obviously I don't know how to say it. They found a way to make the, some of the old <clears throat> tricks fresh again. Yeah, they did. You know, because you're like, oh, we totally know what's gonna happen here. Like, this is the point, and this kind of is, it happens in the beginning, though. Yeah. You know, and we're in the spoiler section. In yeah. the beginning, you're like, ah, this is when the cat jumps out of the closet. And then it doesn't. But then the cat jumps out of the closet anyway. They, they, they mess with you the entire time, because if you've seen the other Child's Play movies, you have certain expectations, right? Um, but they subvert your expectations. Like, a great example, there's a point in which he takes the doll to school because he plans to sell it. Um, but he has no place to keep it and people keep making fun of him and shit like that. So he yeah. asks a teacher uh, to basically keep it in a locker <clears throat> in her class and then he can pick it up later. Um, so he asks her to do it and you fully expect because if you've seen Child's Play 2, that oh, teacher's yeah. gonna die now. Oh yeah. Because that's basically what happened in Child's Play 2. Teacher took away the doll, put it in a fucking closet and then Chucky came out with a ruler and killed her, you know? Yep. You know, that's what you expect. But in this case, he ends up taunting uh, 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 the bully character because she's got like, that not detention, but she's supposed to wait for the principal to arrive to yeah. talk to her about detention. Um, and so she's in that room. And so he ends up taunting her uh, and playing a cat and mouse game with her. He doesn't get to kill her because he keeps getting interrupted, but <laughs> yeah. But you know they're building up to where when whenever he finally does get a chance to kill her, and who knows, he might not actually. Who knows? Yeah, maybe who knows what's gonna maybe happen. she will unbitch herself over the course of the show. We're only two episodes in. I can't see it yet, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Could happen. Um, it'll be really satisfying if he does kill her, though, because yes. oh my god, oh my god. Um, yeah, I I love this show. Um, I, I I can't wait. I can't wait to see how they're gonna incorporate more of Cult of Chucky because. Shit got wild in that movie. Yeah. And the different Chuckies and uh, Fiona Dorif in the Chucky. Oh, Fiona Dorif uh, playing Charles Lee Ray as well as as the character she was. It, it's 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 one of those weird things where you're like, it's 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 you don't often see a father and a daughter share a role. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. It's, it's it's a little weird. Yeah, <laughs> a little weird, but it worked. 
<laughs> but I love it. <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if, if you know Dorf will show up in this. I kind of hope so. She's got to, right? Because like they said that this show is supposed to continue where Cult of Chucky left off, and we already got a hint of um, Andy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we got a hint of Andy, so at some point... There might also be two Chucky dolls already in the story, and we can't tell. That, 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 it's possible. It's possible. Um, we'll have to see where this goes. Oh, the other thing I want to comment on... Oh, I should have commented on this in the non-spoiler section, but it doesn't matter now. Who cares? We, we got like 20 minutes of non-spoiler. We're good. Um, this is probably the best Chucky has looked in a while. Because oh, yeah. like they always over the course of the movies they mess with his design a little bit and lo so like um, I thought he looked fine in uh, Cult of Chucky and in um, Curse of Chucky but he did look different like the design yeah, was slightly yeah. different. This Chucky looks like they recreated the Chucky from Child's Play two. Yes, and it looks exactly like that. You yeah, know. Yeah. It, so like it, it and I kind of like that because it was like oh man it's old school Chucky you know. Well. They, they, it feels like it. You know, and of course I've always liked the various Chucky designs they've done all the time. I love the stitched together one from uh, uh, from Bride and Seed. Like the stitched together yeah. one's fucking awesome. Uh, but it's really cool to uh, to see the old school Chucky back from like the original uh, three movies. Though I think more Child's Play 2 uh, because Child's Play 1 has, has a weird aspect to the design that they improved upon in some of the sequels. Um, he's a little chubbier in Child's yeah. Play 1. Yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I really liked the design of Chucky in this. And also, the mix of CGI, practical puppetry, and little kid in a costume. Yeah. They, 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 they're they pulling all the tricks in the book, and it all works. Even though when it switches to the little kid in the costume, you can tell that it moves a little differently than when it was just a, a puppet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but like, it's it's it's, it's still got Brad Dourif's voice yeah. behind it, so yeah. like, you just buy it. It works really well, like, like that's something that everyone was always, like, worried about whenever they're like, oh, we're gonna do more Child's Play stuff, is that, oh, uh, they're, they're gonna CGI it. But so far, uh, they've only used CGI when necessary, and they've always made it work. Not only in the last few movies in which they actually use CGI, uh, but even the remake and, and the yeah, show. Yeah, uh, they, yeah, because they, because you know, people were right. If you made Chucky totally CGI, it would just die on the screen. Exactly. You know, would have died on the screen. I, and yeah, and, and, and until like a little bit more recently, mm -hmm. you know, where they got good enough with that kind of stuff. But it, no, you. St <clears throat> I don't know how to say it. No, you need a doll. Yeah. The doll needs to be there. And 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 they they do it well in this, you know? It's really awesome. There are times where you can tell that like some of the mouth movements are a little bit CGI'd, but it worked for me. I, I oh, it's fu well, it's not like the puppet fucking absolutely oh, yeah. matched either. No, no, sometimes you know? it wouldn't necessarily match what they were saying either, you know? Yeah. My favorite being uh, in the first Child's Play movie when he actually goes, you fucking, fucking bitch. bitch. If you look at his mouth, it doesn't actually match yeah, what it doesn't, he said. Yeah, it, it doesn't move. <laughs> it's just a permanent. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and the only reason you, you, it comes like that is because the actress is shaking it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but that's old school effects and they made it work. Yep. So yeah, Chucky, it is a sci-fi original show. It is uh, currently available on YouTube and a couple other platforms. Uh, it is coming out weekly. It is now on all out at once. So you're gonna have to tune in every week or wait for it all to be done and binge it at once, your choice. Um, and uh, anything else you want to say before we close this out? Don't fuck with the Chuck. Don't fuck with the Chuck. No, no, don't. Don't. Hashtag that shit. I'm not a monster. <laughs> and with that said, where can they find you, Count Jacula? Oh, you can find me on Twitch, where I stream every Thursday and Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I also run a live play of the game I'm working on called Babylon Rising at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Tuesday, but we're off next week. Uh, we're off next week and we'll be back on the 2nd of November. Until then, you can follow me on Counting Jack at Twitter and Satanic Jackula on Instagram. And if you wanna follow the game that I am working on uh, specifically on Twitter, that is Babylon Game. And what about you? <clears throat> 
Y'all know me, I'm the Horror Guru. You can find me at the Horror Guru on Twitch, on Twitter, on Instagram and Facebook. Just look up the Horror Guru or Blood Splattered Cinema and I'll be there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you're notified of my videos immediately upon their upload. And if you would like to help out either of us more directly, be sure to check out our Patreon pages. And remember, if you decide to go the Patreon route, even a dollar a month can go a long way. And if you made it this far into the vlog, then I want you to comment below and be sure to comment below with the hashtag not a monster. <laughs> hashtag not a monster, work it somehow into your comment below so that I know, so that Jack knows, so that the world knows that you watch this vlog all the way through. And my fellow Gorehounds, we're gonna record one more vlog for this week because I'm actually like hardcore working on a new Blood Splattered Cinema, so I don't wanna overwork myself by doing three vlogs this week. So we're just gonna to try to do two this week and uh, and see if that works. Maybe this weekend we'll do a third one if we feel like it, but it's kind of the end of October, so things are really busy. So yeah, yeah. it is what it is. And uh, with that said, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.